from the tent. We're going to have Asaf as well. There's James. Where's James? There. Hi, James. I'm going to have Tassos. That comes to replace Martin, that unfortunately is ill, so he didn't come today. And also Vlastimil. There he is. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, about uh, marketing innovation for millennials. We're going to be targeting a few verticals. Uh, speaking about uh, daily fantasy sports, speaking about esports, uh, slot games, and the virtual sports as well. Um, I would like to start with Nadia from the tent. Um, Nadia. You have a small presentation for us. Yeah. Um, you're going to tell us about batting habits. You're going to tell us about players, your markets, and so on. Um, would you like to tell us more about it? Yeah, uh, first of all, good morning, everyone. And nice to see so many people here. Uh, I work at Natant. Uh, we are one of the top providers for the slot games. And we work with a lot of customers. So it would be interesting to share with you, and I hope you will enjoy it, like what data we see on the network, You know, what do we think. So let's kick in. So we did a small like digging in our BI network. As I told you, we have a lot of a lot of customers over 200, and uh, and here we go. Zoltan, I need some help. So when it comes to player age, as you can see, you know, uh, it's very similar pattern when it comes to millennials and other players, but majority of our players are between, you know, 26 and I would say like 34 years old. I think you do it better. <laughs> it works by fingerprint. Okay, let's try it again. Uh, when it comes to, you know, number of players, again, like, you know, you can see the pattern that, like, you know, millennials, like, you know, again, it depends on the age, but uh, it's somewhere the majority of the players still. Uh, you know, uh, gender balance, interesting to see that slowly, slowly we have a number of females increasing, you know, so it's interesting to compare with all generation. You know, it's also shows in this slide that uh, more and more, and it's uh, very dependent on the country. So there are some countries where you have much more females playing, and it's obviously affecting the type of games which we are developing, and also the markets where which we are targeting. No. Nadia, sorry, this, mm -hmm. these um, uh, statistics are for online slots, Yes, correct? for slots. Right. Uh, slots and table games, so all online right. products like yeah. RNG. Uh, when it comes to bet amount as well, you know, you can see that, um, you know, they take over quite a lot. H, you know, there was a dip at the beginning in 2000, but moving forward, it's like, you know, growing slowly, which kind of shows that, you know, you know the generation is getting like a little bit older, but it's pretty much flat. You know, active for days as well, if you can see the older players, but more, which means like, you know, if you retire, you have much more free time, <laughs> you know, when you're working, <laughs> you know, you're a little bit busy, but there is not such a huge difference over there. Uh, number of games players as well, it's very similar trend, you know, you know, I think they stick to the games which they like and they, they you know, continue playing them. I would say all the players are a bit more adventurous in this regard, but per round, very similar, you know, pretty much, you know, 1838 and 3858, it's again the same pattern here. Uh, device, it's interesting, you know, it, you can see straight away that smartphone is taking over and we can also see it on our network, you know, like if five years ago, you know, we have like 20, 80, you know, and 80% was desktop that like now certain, you know, it's like markets, it's 80 by 20. So mobile is definitely taking over. Uh, playing time, working hours, not good statistics, but <laughs> we have what we have, lunch and, you know, um, later on like not as much interesting also to see i think it's something it's a very interesting slides for the operator as well you know when do you want to launch your campaigns so if you can see you know the, ma the most playing time it's like in the evening so sometimes maybe it's not worth it to send the e shot in the morning so something worth to consider as well and uh, by hours as well here uh, 
games, so table games, video pokers and video slots. So obviously, you know, we are video slots providers, so we're very heavy on video slots. We try to dig out a little bit what type of games, but there is no specific preference. We didn't see any diversification or something. Uh, we can have a little bit by, yeah. oops, yeah. Can we have the presentation again? <laughs> and if you can go to the last slide right away. Pretty much last, there would be some yeah. slides. So this is very good insight from NetEnt. I mean, NetEnt is NetEnt, so uh, data they are providing us, I think, can, can be very insightful for everyone in this room um, to understand you know, the, the, the market situations. And if there are operators in the room, I'm sure there are, you can use what's behind me to, uh, to target your players. Oops, yeah. So uh, we dig a little bit in the table game, so that was very interesting actually. So if you can see by markets, uh, you see actually those type of players, they like table games. And there are some countries where the, the preference is much, much higher. So this was also an interesting outcome. When it comes to slot, we didn't notice such a big difference. It was very Why is Portugal stuff. zero? Mm? <laughs> I'm Portuguese. <laughs> You should have. Uh, we don't have table games know, in Portugal <laughs> yet, so it's <laughs> a room to improve, but we know that they're big over there. So that's a little bit from us. Then, if you have any questions, we can chat during the break. All right. Thank you very much, Nadia. I would like to do something here. Um, I was meant to do this in the beginning, and then I just skipped it. Uh, we're going to be speaking about some verticals esports, daily fantasy, and so on. With a quick raise of hands, who's, who in this room is uh, working on esports? Okay. Is there anyone? Yeah? Okay. What about daily fantasy sports? Virtual sports? Okay. Awesome. And uh, table games, casino games? Okay, majority. All right. Um, Nadia, what's the main uh, challenge when you are targeting millennials? I think we have a challenge because at NetEnt we do have a different approach. So we try to develop games. We all we have a very huge portfolio, and we always try to find what's missing. So we analyze. We do. We, we work a lot with BI. We work. We work a lot with our customers. So we don't target specific player groups. It's more like if you're entering, for example, Czech market, we see okay what type of games they like in the market. You know what, and uh, we do a lot of research before we produce a game. And then after the game is out, we do post, you know, game analysis. We do like, you know, two weeks, 45 days, 90 days, you know, and we see. So it's more like, you know, how can, because you have different type of players, different habits. So I would say it's more like, you know, like any standard approach versus other markets here. And um, so far it works, as we can see. All right, thank you very much. Uh, now to my left, James, how are you doing? Good. We were together in a panel in uh, Malta about the Latin American markets. Um, speaking about Latin America, Europe, Asia, and so on, you're active in all those um, areas, right? Um, you've been launching some innovative products. Do you want to talk about them? Um, how is our millennials being targeted in your uh, products and how you're doing it? First of all, good morning and thank you for the invite. Um, yes, so I work with uh, Scout Gaming. We are the biggest uh, provider for uh, B2B fantasy sports and also betting games. Uh, so correct, we we actually seeing that uh, fantasy sports is getting interest not just in Europe but also outside Europe, uh, Latin America and also and also in Asia. Uh, and lately, also we've been working some of the big one of the biggest brands also uh, in these in these markets. Um, what we're seeing is that fantasy sports is uh, the perfect tool, I would say, for millennials. And I would say why? Because first and foremost, the millennials, they, are, uh, they like the social element, right? So they are all the time on, on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, connecting with their friends. And fantasy sports actually provide this because you can not just participate in tournaments, but also create tournaments between uh, your friends. So it has the element of competition. And that is something that is different than the current uh, product offering that, that operators are actually providing. So uh, fantasy sports can actually attract, attract, attract the millennials. But also fantasy sports, um, not just that, it's also tap in into uh, millennials that are not just interested in one particular sport. When you speak about fantasy sports, usually my, our minds go to uh, football, right? But uh, we're seeing, for example, in India, where we're also very big, uh, there's uh, cricket, 
where everyone is actually wants to actually participate in cricket, but also other sports, like for example basketball. So it allows uh, operators to widen their, their demographics. And since also uh, fantasy sports is very content driven, uh, it's also the perfect tool to, for affiliates, for example, to actually uh, promote. So operators, who are we're see what we're seeing is that operators are working with affiliates uh, to actually provide them content through fantasy sports. And by doing that, uh, they will not just uh, acquire players or millennials into their, their sites for fantasy sports, but also cross-sell into other uh, products that they have. Okay, thank you. I, I'm going to ask you a few more questions, but Asaf. I just want exactly. to emphasize that uh, we are seeing the great success of the Premier League uh, fantasy sports uh, product, which is a free product. It's not betting related, but uh, you can see that millions of people are registered and competing with each other uh, by the team that they like, by, by the country they are from, with their friends, etc. And people really like to see, even there are no uh, uh, reward in money-wise, uh, people really like to see themselves in top of the league. They promote it on social media. I'm the top of the league or third in the league in the Israeli, let's say, uh, uh, fantasy league of the Premier League, etc. And it really attracts millennials and they share it. And uh, it's a huge success. And it's, it's coming from the U.S. You can say the fantasy sport is coming mainly from the U.S., but... It uh, attracts millennials and it appeals to millennials also in Europe uh, in big time. Well, I'm a daily fantasy sports player myself. Um, do you guys have any teams or do you play? I yeah? play in the Premier League uh, fantasy. League. Okay, I play the, the Portuguese league and I obviously am a Boa Vista supporter and they're not doing so well. And obviously because you know my passion is in Boa Vista, I use the Boa Vista players mostly. So I'm like in the place 55,000. Oh, in the fantasy <laughs> league in the Premier League, you can choose only three players from a certain team. Yeah, I know. You I chose the 11 uh, players of Boavista. I know. I chose the three players of Boavista and then one of each of the other teams. But that strategy didn't work out so so well. Asaf, um, you're an odds aggregator. Uh, you work with mainly sports. I saw some political as well. I saw the Eurovision odds. I don't know why Portugal is like in 12th place. I would like to know why. We have such a nice song. Um, but uh, what about esports? Esports betting. You, uh, we accumulate, we are an odds comparison company, first of all. And we accumulate the odds from all uh, bookmakers also about esports. But is, first of all, there are two challenges here for us that. Uh, Behold us from showing these odds. First of all, uh, our main site, oddsonex2.com, is, uh, I can say I'm not a conservative, but the site is a little bit conservative. It uh, appeals to the pro punter and less to millennials. And uh, I don't th think that we'll see a huge traffic uh, on esports. The second thing, it's the ethical issue here. Uh, I'm not uh, someone to judge uh, and decide uh, what's right and what's wrong, but uh, esports teams uh, are considered, some of them are considered mainly by uh, teens. And teens are tend to, to get, uh, let's say if you come to someone, it's match fixing at the end of the day. Uh, you can come to someone 17, 16 years old and offer him uh, some amount of money uh, in order to lose, uh, ditch the... So the that's your main concern about the Yeah, this is the main concern and also the, the ethical issue of... Uh, also in football, I must say, that we are not showing the minor leagues. Uh, I'm thinking uh, the youth leagues. Because uh, youth players are more uh, tend to and appeal to, if they get a certain amount of money, to fix the game. And uh, th this is a big problem here. And uh, this needs a regulation. Yeah, so maybe we as talked about regulation uh, before, but this really needs a regulation because things involved 
match, there are match fixing that are known to be, especially in Asia, you hear it a lot about it, and this is what we hold us from promoting it. Okay. Um, as the industry matures as well, I, I think we're going to eventually see it fading. Vlasimil, I think this is a, a very good uh, point uh, for you to start. Um, you're an esports operator. Um, can you be, please tell us a bit more about your business and then you can contribute to what Asaf just said because I saw you shaking your head, not agreeing with something. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, so, hello everyone. So, uh, we are building a new esports platform. We want to be focused only purely on uh, esports and millennials. So I agree that match fixing is problem, but the esports is uh, maturing, and match fixing is problem in every sport, right? So <coughs> I guess it won't uh, be we cannot get rid of it, but it will be fading away. Uh, esports players are getting well paid; they have really high salaries right now. There are official leagues in the U.S., Europe, uh, across the world. So this problem won't be that big in the near future. And eSport as an industry has 1 billion revenue and it's, a, it's said to be like four to five biggest sport in the sports book portfolios. So it's growing every year and every operator needs to focus on eSport right now or they won't be able to catch, catch the new customers. Do you think eSports is going to be eSports betting essential? Uh, in the near future for um, operators in sports betting? Yeah, I think I think it will be really, really big, like football big, because a lot of millennials just watch YouTube, uh, just watch their games, you know, and e-sport, we say e-sport, but it's not the one sport. We have like four or five games which are played and you need to treat them separately. And uh, e-sport for a regular operator is hard, you know, you need to have a different design, you need to think about odds and so on. So it's it's really challenging. Thank you. Uh, in all in translations, we are all about sports and betting and, and everything. Uh, and we're also sponsoring an esports team. And I don't know if you've guessed already, Boa Vista, obviously. Uh, they play a Pro Evolution soccer tournament in Europe. Uh, it's called eFootball Pro, organized by Konami. We play against Barcelona, Monaco, and so on. And um, it's Just a really a quick nice. Comment, if yeah, I can. sure, sure. Uh, the offering of the of the operators right now on esports is rather limited, and there is a big room for someone who will focus on esports. Uh, it uh, certainly attracts millennials, and I really hope that uh, people are well paid, etc. And match fixing will be off. Of course, you will have match fixing also in uh, other uh, types of sports. And uh, it's, uh, if we are looking at millennials, uh, I'm sure it's be a huge hit, especially in the US, I think. Uh, but it's also propagate to Europe. Thank you. I was, I was just going to say that uh, this tournament is organized by Konami, one of the biggest game developers in the world. And uh, the fact that all in translations is actually linked to gambling was a bit concerned to them even though I saw them at ICE, and they actually produce um, slot machines, and that's kind of, that didn't make much sense to me, but, um, so on my, on my right side I have Tassos from Golden Race. I was impressed at ICE as well. Your games are so realistic, uh, and some of them are actually real players, right? Or yes, uh, well, first of all, uh, good morning everybody. I apologize for the last minute change. Uh, I'm the surrogate panelist, although not having the bright smile that Martin has. Uh, so, in contradiction to the, uh, to the panelists before, we started from retail business. I mean, for the sake of clarity, virtual games are RNG-based games, the visualization of which is a, a sports event, a 3D animated sports event. Uh, so, we draw from sports book uh, eventually. And when uh, this uh, industry started back in uh, early notice, uh, it meant to fill the gaps in the live uh, schedule of, uh, you know, of, the, of games. Uh, back then, Golden Race also started in 2006, and uh, we actually felt this uh, differentiation in the sportsbook shops clientele. I mean, uh, we, it was not an instant revelation, but it built up gradually, so it was obvious that uh, the clientele was aging. And uh, this proved to be it was not just a matter of age, but a matter of generation. I mean, uh, the 25-year-old 10 years ago did, was not prone to frequent a betting shop, 
And the same individual today, 10 years after, at his 35 years old, is still not prone to do that. So, uh, yes, we should approach this matter because actually we lived it. Uh, we passed on online quite fast because it was an obvious evolution step. It was uh, quite straightforward for both providers and punters. Uh, but still we had to address how to attract these people, let's say, onto our games. Uh, as uh, Nadi and the gentleman said, uh, the millennials have uh, some specific characteristics, I mean, sociologically speaking. So uh, they like to share their experiences, uh, they like to be social. Obviously, they are digital tech savvy. Uh, some of them, the late millennials, are uh, digital natives. I mean, they have no recollection whatsoever of the pre-digital world. Uh, so it was uh, a cautious choice to make the games as realistic as possible. And I'm not... Uh, speaking about only animation, which resembles, you know, the games the millennials are used to, but also the, uh, the game experience. So what we did actually differently, instead of getting into an animation uh, race, is uh, to make uh, the games realistic. So despite being an RNG-based game, we trade the odds. That means that uh, uh, when uh, you check uh, in real life we're talking about football, a virtual game with a real one. In our case, the odds are very similar. So this creates the feeling of uh, realism and indeed enhances the skill element of the player. So it's not something that playing, for instance, uh, Porto versus Boavista and Boavista is the favorite. Well, this will not, will not happen in the real life, you know. It may happen, but not, let's say, no, not reflected right. in the odds. I'm sorry about that. So you don't see funny things popping around, let's say, in, uh, in uh, the game's creation. Uh, for instance, uh, when uh, Leicester won the championship uh, in 2016, the season started in our virtual EPL. Uh, Leicester had a higher weight. Along the season, this was corrected so as to make sure that uh, always we keep it uh, as realistic as possible. Uh, we also try to approach the user interface in a more innovative uh, way. So instead of uh, the content-driven virtual games approach, so it's a video stream and an XML data feed, and then this creates you know, the event, we created a virtual betting platform. So it's a sports book, but virtual. Uh, you see multiple leagues, multiple tracks. You can the betting engine inside, so you can combine bets. You have the feeling of a real sports book uh, through just a wallet integration. And we copied that as well to the self-betting terminals which we think it's a way to get these people, you know, also to the uh, brick and mortar venues. Either that being a casino, a betting shop, or, you know, a bar or a cafe, which also is a trend. Tassos, do you think um, this is highly cultural, like depending on markets, because we're speaking about marketing, um, your games, I believe, for example, in Greece, basketball would be the preferred virtual game, in Portugal, probably football. It's, it's highly cultural, right? Even with millennials uh, and other generations. I mean, uh, the millennials have also a distinct characteristic. Due to the globalization era and, you know, this uh, exposure to digital world, mm -hmm. they are maybe the most homogeneous social demographic cohort in uh, comparison with the previous ones. So uh, I would say, yes, uh, apart the specific, uh, let's say, uh, jurisdictional differences, we can say that uh, there are a lot of common space. Uh, so the approach uh, we see that applies worldwide. Now, in regards to the sports, in essence, uh, what we have seen, maybe because of the football realism, is that in our case, most, about 80% of the 400 million tickets we generate per month is football related. Independently Even of the country or market. Exactly. Okay. exactly. I mean, it might be a little bit uh, higher, let's say, in... Uh, Africa, for instance, rather than uh, Europe, but still, this is the trend. All right. Thank you, Tassos. Uh, Vlastimil, how do you approach live betting? Um, are you going to have live bets or just... Yeah, so the so e sports fans or millennials are just focused on the live betting. They don't care on so e much about the pre-match. Pre uh, so live odds are the, the key key advantage. And actually, uh, live e sport odds are really hard because there's a tons of... Uh, variables in the game. It's the one game. of the main challenges of, uh, I believe, any uh, vertical, but specifically with esports. Yeah, it's 
Well, you have uh, really a lot of variables in the game, and the game change very quickly. It's like in football, and uh, it can take some time, you know, to just throw the ball or kick the ball. You have changes in seconds, and it can be very big changes, like the ca game completely change, like in Dota 2. So for traditional operators or the odds, uh, odds engines, it's really hard to do the esports live betting odds, right? Okay, thank you, Asaf. I you want, want to ask you and tackle the. How do you tackle the issue that uh, in esports I can say that uh, there are more uh, things that happen per second than in football, because uh, someone can uh, skip, a, take a reward, uh, skip uh, to the next stage, etc. So it's much harder to do live betting as an operator than on football, I think. And also, another question, uh, do you have scouts that watch live the game or do you uh, uh, watch on Twitch or on TV because there is lagging? Okay, uh, thanks, this is actually a great question. So, so. Uh, the first one, how do, how do we solve the problem with uh, a lot of data? This is how I understand it. So we have a really great uh, analytics team. We have mathematicians and data scientists in our team. So we created a completely new mathematical models backed with uh, statistics and uh, artificial intelligence. We have a lot of historical data, so we are able to create a really, really great odds. So this is for the first one. And the second one, actually this is the toughest one. So yeah. Esport is uh, really fragmented right now. You have a lot of tournaments, a lot of organizers, and you need to actually work with all of them to get uh, some data feed or some uh, betting stream. So yeah, we watch uh, Twitch, we watch uh, YouTube, or we have some data feed from tournaments or organizers. And for some tournaments we cannot get access to, we have scouts on the stadium as well. All right, thank you. Uh, Nadia, back to you. Um, we've seen daily fantasy sports, visual sports, esports. All of these verticals are relatively new. Um, you're managing mostly casino games, so a bit older games. How can you keep innovating your games to still appeal to millennials and maybe even the iGen, which are people that were born after 95, that nowadays would have like around 23 years old. Um, how can you keep your games innovative and Social, for example, I've heard someone speaking about how social is important nowadays. Um, how can you how can you guarantee uh, constant innovation to keep on on uh, attracting this type of generation? It's a lot of hard work <laughs> to start with, but Natan always position itself like innovator in the industry. So we have a lot of people, you know, like constantly thinking, what can we do differently? How can we innovate? And you mentioned social. Uh, I'm not sure if you know, but we actually launched social casino last year. So we went live with uh, in US market, so we're trying testing it out. We are considering Asia as well, because it's a new product vertical we would like to develop. And um, it's interesting, it's something new as well to attract people. Uh, we also noticed because uh, we are also expanding a lot. We are in many regulated markets. Uh, we are heavily investing in Asia right now. And we also notice that uh, fantasy sports, e-sport is picking up in Asia. So it's interesting to observe how the market is moving. Uh, but when it comes to slots, uh, I think we know the magic, you know, the recipe, it's a lot of components, uh, how to get it right, what to do, things. It's also sometimes trial and error, because if we know how to release Starburst, you know, we only release those type of games. Uh, but again, a lot of data. We, like, we are a very data-driven company, you know, so we want to see the patterns, we want to analyze it, and... Uh, and also a lot of ideas. We employ a lot of great people. We have five studios spread around the world. And, and that's one of the reasons as well why don't we want to keep everybody in the same place because then ideas will be the same. So we want to diversify as well. And um, this we're trying to get more brands as well, which are appealing. So one of the brands, Guns N' Roses, it was a hit. It was a game of the year. So Jumanji also, just at eyes, got the game of the year as well. So it's the game which appeals yeah, to... Sure Jumanji would appeal to millennials, I remember. Yes. Uh, so the, the movie and... Yeah, now we're getting more brands as well, you know. So Ozzy and others, so we try to diversify as well. And Is that like a strategy? You can, for example, uh, Jumanji or other movies, other brands, that you try to 
uh, build around uh, a name or a movie which is already familiar with that generation. So that's part of your strategy as you well. You know, right? it appeals to very broad jurisdictions. So you know, you can from very early millennials till like you know till the end, and uh, that's how you get. To so those maybe in like 15 years from now, we'll be doing a Peppa Pig. Uh, in games, lots <laughs> games. My daughter is going to play it for sure. Uh, yeah, but that's like, you know, uh, then we get to the, when is the forum about compliance and age restrictions? Oh yeah, of <laughs> course. <there's the laughs> but uh, yeah, you're right, my son. They're going to be over, they're going to be uh, uh, over 18 by then. So, you know, it's going to remind them of, of their childhood. Uh, yeah, it's all about the gaming. <laughs> yeah, the maybe right maybe you, should, uh, you should take this idea, eh? the Peppa Pig. Um, so about uh, James, Daily Fantasy Sports, back to you. Um, your the main sports uh, is the main sports football or you do have other other sports um, in your portfolio? Yeah, so uh, we don't do just football. We actually do uh, different type of sports like you know cricket, basketball, uh, skiing, for example, cycling. Uh, so we do different type of sports. But in terms of innovation, what we're seeing is that um, in terms of fancy sports, usually it is uh, related to daily or seasonal. Uh, fantasy sports. So now what we're seeing is when you're actually playing fantasy sports, it's all about you know the players that you pick up. Right? So you mentioned before that you picked up a team full of you know, your favorite team and you are actually losing, right? Um, so it's all about the players. So what we are seeing now is that still uh, seasonal and daily fantasy sports is going to be the main game, but games around uh, that are also evolving. Like for example, when you're talking about any type of sports, at the end of the day, you're talking about players. So how are the players going to perform? How, I don't know, Ronaldo is going to perform versus Messi. So we are also seeing uh, betting games coming out of that. So betting on a specific player, not on player props, but on how the player is actually going to perform versus one another. And also uh, other innovations that we're actually also um, uh, developing is, um, if speci specifically for the millennials, is that if you're watching the game, and we all know that uh, in play is actually very, um, uh, very crucial, um, imagine a situation where you're watching the, ma the match and you're actually changing players immediately into your fantasy team. So that, of course, uh, will gather more you know, millennials since, since they are hooked up to, to the mobiles. So it will actually help them to play more the games and also put them over into the, the operator side. And by doing that, they can also cross-sell other uh, verticals uh, like, like the traditional sports book to the millennials. Okay, thank you. Um, Tassos, a question about your um, opinion. Is, like I've asked the same about esports and about virtual sports. Do you think virtual sports will be essential in the sports um, betting platforms from now on in the future? Uh, yes, I mean, uh, as I said, uh, virtual sports started as a filler product. Now it's a market on its own merit. Uh, currently, we have clients, although the market standard for our industry is that uh, virtual sports represent 20%, let's say, of the sports book numbers. Uh, in our case, we have clients that uh, make more than 50% of their revenue coming out of the total revenue, sports book and virtual sport, out of the sports of the uh, virtual sport, so actually they are at par with the sports book numbers, uh, maybe due to their realistic form. Uh, so yes, I think it's a, it's a trend, it's keep on growing. Uh, as uh, the markets are being regulated, it will no further expansion. And obviously, uh, online is the future. In our case, we have seen with this new approach, the online percentage to grow for 10 to 20%. And have in mind that uh, half percent, half, uh, half our tickets actually, come from uh, Africa, I mean, 200 million tickets per month, so which, where there are digital, uh, technology constraints in regard to the online and mobile banking, so uh, gambling. So it's not like that they don't want to play online, they don't have the means. And in contradiction, Kenya, that is a very uh, savvy country, mobile-wise, we make one million tickets per day only mobile. So I think this is the way. Uh, I think also that the millennials are not susceptible to gambling, yes, but still, they are not oblivious to that. Uh, so there are ways to be approached excuse, through some innovation and through some fresh ideas, I would say. Thank you. Uh, uh, question. 
I see that uh, on uh, especially UK fast uh, uh, operators, uh, the main product of virtual sport is horse racing. So I, I wonder, would it propagate to other sports also on traditional sports books? Look, to, to our experience, uh, as I said, it's 80% uh, in total comes from football. Uh, followed by horse racing. So even in the UK, football still is predominant, but very close, as you rightly said, with, uh, with the horse racing. Uh, I think these are, however, the standards. I mean, it's football, races, and uh, in specific markets, specific games. For instance, would be ice hockey, or American sports, obviously, now that the US opens. So we try to follow the trend, and although we know that the business comes mainly from one sport, we try also to have some local flavor so as to attract, you know, more and engage the local clientele. Thank you. I would like to invite the audience as well to, if you guys have any questions for the panel. Um, Tal, you always have questions. Do you have any questions for us? <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions for the panel? No? Okay, Nadia, um, apart from your online uh, casino games, is Natent planning on any of these other verticals, uh, like daily fantasy sports, visual sports, uh, e-sports, and so on? You never know, but uh, I guess the secret of and the success of every business is like to invest in new product verticals. So we're always, you know, looking at something, keeping our eyes open, and maybe next eyes you eyes you will see something oh. new coming up. Okay, nice. You always have something to reveal, something new, right? <laughs> so maybe next year we're gonna have. Uh, the biggest uh, esports announced in uh, in the gaming industry, or the daily fantasy sports, it or would be virtual sports. Special. Well, they surely had a very good stand this year. Uh, I was really impressed with uh, with the quality of the virtual sports. Actually, exactly. You can just partner right now. Um, I, I was actually. Do you, do you actually have real players? Or everything is virtual. You know, everything is, uh, is virtual, yes. and uh, the latest innovation we had is that we had also instant virtual games, so on demand, so even more ubiquitous, uh, faster. So I can just organize a game there and then... I just hope exactly. the, ma the money is not virtual. No, the money is not virtual, it for the time be, being at least. Do you accept bitcoins? Yes, we do. So it we is do. virtual as well. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> right point. Uh, okay, guys, uh, do you have anyone to intervene? Uh, say anything else, guys? Anything? Uh, good? We're good then. Thank you very much for your uh, tendency today. Uh, it was a pleasure to moderate this panel and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.